a duty. Bye bye. I have a duty. I have a bye bye. <laughs> Well, clearly nothing's changed for me. I still enter rooms yelling, I have a duty, I have bye bye So I've been keeping this a complete secret from a lot of people in my real life and a lot of people online, everyone online, uh, for the past year. And hopefully I can get this off my chest and introduce you to someone who's really become a big part of my life. In 1987, my dad met his birth father's family for the first time. And his aunt, Norma, and his uncle, Dick, had a video camera. And I, I honestly don't know why she did this or why she thought ahead like this, but they essentially vlogged the whole thing. They sat my dad, his birth father, and his birth father's sister, Norma, down, and Dick filmed an interview with them about what it was like to meet for the first time when my dad was 40 years old. And then I've just kind of been sitting on this footage for years, wondering like what I should do with it. The three people that you're about to see in this video are my dad, uh, he's 40 years old here, he's got a mullet, he's got gold jewelry, uh, and also he is in the throes of addiction. So at this point when you're watching him, he is an alcoholic and a drug addict. This is Virgil, my dad's birth dad. They haven't seen each other since my dad was five years old. Uh, and so this is them getting the families together for the first time. And Virgil and my dad have met, I think, one time prior to this. And then the next person is Norma, and she is Virgil's sister. And she is the person who my dad first got in touch with. There was no Facebook, there was no LinkedIn, there was no classmates.com. My dad literally hired a private investigator and the first member of the family he found was Norma. And Norma linked my dad up to Virgil, his birth father. In 1987, my parents have been married for four years and my dad has a teenage son from his first marriage. On July the 12th, 1987, I received a phone call from my husband telling me that he had just talked to Virgil's son. And I was, of course, very much surprised and I said, Mark, Mark Richer? So my dad's gone through three different last names in his life. At this point, Mark Richer is my dad. So he told me that Mark would call me back then that evening. We waited and waited and we didn't get a call. So I called the uh, operator information in Florida and started looking for a Mark Richer. Of course, we couldn't find a Mark Richer. The next evening, I uh, had got the call from Mark. And uh, of course, needless to say, I was hysterical and couldn't talk. <laughs> I think I cried. <laughs> And uh, he was wanting then, of course, to know where his father was and if he could have his dad's number. That day wound up to be one of the happiest days of my life. That evening, sitting at home in Lake Havasu, Arizona, I received a phone call from a man that said he was Mark Richer, my son. I couldn't speak for a while. And then I think I started screaming. Like I've been told to my wife that it's Mark. Mark's on the phone. I didn't know until that time what had happened to Mark because I hadn't seen him since he was around five years old, which would date back to about 1952. And I didn't know even whether he was still alive. What Virgil means by that is that my dad's mom left him and took my dad with her, moving from Indiana to Florida. But Virgil didn't know that they went to Florida. And there was no internet, there was no cell phone, there was no way for Virgil to know. So like, in the 50s, when you disappeared, you just disappeared. The reason he thinks that my dad might have died is because my dad was around draft age to the military when Vietnam started. So when Vietnam ended and my dad still hadn't reached out to Virgil, Virgil pretty much assumed my dad must have died in combat. When he made the phone call to me, it was almost like starting life over again with him. I suppose January of 87 was when the uh Something started happening. I was uh, celebrating my 40th birthday, and my wife and I had gone to California, and we had started talking about uh, my past and the fact that I hadn't seen my father since I was about five years old. And uh, there was a desire on my part to make an attempt anyway. We uh, asked the private investigator that my wife knew if he would uh, make some inquiries. I, I had no idea that Dad had moved to Arizona. 
Um, I had no idea he had seven brothers and sisters. That's when I talked to Dick. Dick is Norma's husband. He's filming this. He was real glad to hear from me, and he said to call back that Norma would be uh, home that evening. And I said I would, but I forgot I had a meeting that night that was going to keep me out rather late. So, uh... Not knowing that she was waiting anxiously for the phone call, I was attending a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Business meeting I had. I don't think you had a meeting, Dad. So I called her and got through the hysterics and, and, the, <laughs> <laughs> and all the excitement and everything. And uh, that's when I called Arizona afterwards because she had Dad's number. And we talked for a long time and... Uh, a lot of excitement, electricity. Didn't know each other that well, but yet still, you know, felt something really strong, you know, that was had been tie, missing. Tie there or something. Right, like that. something had been missing, you know, from both of our lives. It was God's will that we have this separation, and that was His will that we come back together, and that's the only way you can explain something like that. So. As of present day, my dad's been sober for 12 years, and I honestly thought that a lot of his hippy-dippy, new age, mumbo-jumbo, spiritual family stuff started when he got sober. But looking back at this video, apparently he's always been this way. When you first seen him, what was your reaction? Well, we Did had traded have... pictures already. Oh, right? okay, yeah. so you knew so what he looked we like. We knew, you know, what to look yeah. for. For the kids, there was no internet. So when you wanted to see a picture of someone, you had to mail photos. My dad and Virgil didn't see pictures of each other until they had mailed each other photos, hard copies of photos. But I think I would have recognized him. Yeah, well, he looks so much like the Richards, it's just, yeah. you know, just. We could see it right away when dad sent the picture to Karen and I. Karen's my mom. She's the redhead you saw puppeteering me in the beginning. She was, you know, look at this, look, I mean, this is the spitting image. You know, this is, <laughs> this, is <you. laughs> this is your dad, absolutely. This is you in about 25, 30 years. <laughs> Not only did I find my son, but uh, found out, that, of course, that we had a grandson, which we wanted to be grandparents for so long, and here we were, grandparents for 14 years at that time, and didn't know it. <laughs> Remember, that's Joshua, my dad's son from his first marriage. Then a year and a half later, they come along and give us one of the most beautiful granddaughters. The granddaughter's me. That's me. I'm the granddaughter. It is quite a, quite a story, quite, yeah. a, you know, quite a history there. But it's turned out, as Mark said, it has turned out wonderful. It was supposed to be, I guess. Yeah. Couldn't have made us happier. So, yeah, we met my dad's birth father, and then we continued to have a relationship with him until he passed away while I was in college. And that should have been the end of the story, right? Not even close. Fast forward to 2017, where the exact same thing happens to my dad. This is Jason. He's meeting his dad for the very first time at the age of 40. And that guy is also my dad. My dad found his birth father when he was 40, and then, my dad found out about a son that he didn't know existed who was also 40 and they are meeting for the first time here. So the same exact thing happened to my dad twice from both ends, as the dad and as the son. That's Cheyenne, my little sister, the blonde. We live in LA, Jason lives in San Diego, my dad lives in Fort Lauderdale. So the kids flew out so that we could be there when my dad and Jason met for the first time. So in the summer of 2017, my dad called me and said, are you busy? And I said, yes. And he said, great, I'm gonna put your sister on the line as well, which is classic my dad. And he's like, I have something to tell you guys. And we're like, what? Like what now? And he's like, okay. So you know how we did 23andMe? And I said, yeah, because my dad and I had done that five years ago just to look into health risks. 23andMe is one of those genetics websites where you send in your DNA and they tell you if you're predisposed to colon cancer or if you're 100% Ashkenazi Jew. And he said, so you have a brother. And I said, yeah, we have a brother. We have an older half brother named Joshua. We already know about him. And he was like, no, a different brother. You have a brother, his name is Jason. He's 40 years old, he lives in San Diego. We did not know about him until right now. What? Cheyenne flips out, very upset, doesn't wanna deal with this. Her world is shattered, goodbye. I am immediately skeptical. How do we know that this genetics test is correct? How do we know this guy is actually our brother? I'm terrified. I don't know this person. What if he's a Nazi? What if he types with really bad punctuation? So many bad things could happen. I look at his Facebook. He looks exactly like my dad. 
and exactly like my little sister. My sister and him could be twins. He's dressed really nicely. He's making jokes. He's changed his profile picture to reflect pride, which thank God he's married to a woman and straight, but he's an ally. He's cool. So I decide to FaceTime him and we talk for a couple hours and it's the weirdest first date of all time. And then my sister relaxes and decides she's okay with it. And a week later, she and I drive down to San Diego to meet him in person. It goes really well, and we start to slowly build a little friendship with this guy. But he still hasn't met our dad. His dad, my dad, our dad. He hasn't met our dad. So we fly out as moral support with him so he can meet his dad, our dad, my dad for the first time. I knew about the interview that Norma and Dick had done with Virgil and my dad when they had first met. And I thought, this is a great opportunity to remake that footage because that footage was so special to me. So while we were home in Fort Lauderdale, I pulled them outside for a couple hours and I just asked them about the whole story. So that's my dad. He's old now, uh, still wearing gold jewelry, no longer a drug addict. Last summer, uh -huh. um, I got a message on Facebook uh, that, you know, in the private messenger that, um, from somebody whose name I didn't recognize. So yeah, it's 2017. Facebook exists now. It was very polite, it was very respectful. He qualified the message with saying that he was, didn't want anything, uh, that he was successful and <laughs> he was adopted. Jason's birth mom put him up for adoption, so Jason actually grew up with another family. He had put his DNA on 23andMe and he had gotten back DNA results that, um, I was his biological father. Listen, none of us were surprised. The thing you have to know about my dad is that he's not Mr. Cleaver. He's always been a party guy. I mean, him having kids that he didn't know about makes complete sense. My first thought was, this is a Nigerian daddy scam. <laughs> he had put in his message, look, if you don't respond, I understand. I don't want anything, but I just thought you might want to know this. Mm -hmm. So I responded to him, how brave it was for him to reach out to me. Uh, there's a few details I'd like to know, such as the name of his biological mother and if he knows how I get in touch with her. And uh, he shot me back her name and her phone number. I don't remember if he gave me Elliot's name in there or not. Elliot's the guy who Jason's birth mother thought was Jason's birth father. I think maybe what happened was he included the name of the guy that she thought was the uh, biological father. I recognized his name. Mm -hmm and kind of her name in connection with him. We had mutual friends. Mm -hmm. He and I were not real, you know, we didn't know each other directly. We knew each other through other people. Yeah. So I made some phone calls. And one of the guys I called, I asked him if he had heard, since Elliot passed away, if he had heard from Missy. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, she just got in touch with me to tell me that the uh, child that her and Elliot had, that Elliot wasn't the father. And I said, oh, really? And he said, wait. Why are you calling? <gasps> and, and before I got done with the uh, 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 he said, you're the father? I said, well, uh, yeah, we think so. <laughs> so then I asked my dad, do you even remember hooking up with her? No, I still didn't remember her, except I remembered Elliot had a girlfriend named Missy. Uh. And so I called Missy and I said who it was. And she already knew Jason had told her about the test results. And I'm thinking, how am I going to tell her I don't remember her? And we talked for a minute or two, and she says, I have to tell you something, Mark. I said, what's that? She goes, I don't remember you. And I started laughing, and she said, what? And I said, because I didn't know how to tell you I don't remember you. <laughs> she said, wait a minute. You were friends with so-and-so and so-and-so. And I said, yeah. She goes, you were the guy that owned the leather shop with the long hair. And then I started remembering her a little bit more. I remembered that she was much younger uh, and beautiful and um, that I probably could have, you know, had a one night stand with her. It was within my scope. <sighs> was she, was she cheating on Elliot? Yeah, she was with Elliot then. Dad. What? <sighs> I went back to how I felt when I reached out to my father. Jason needed my comfort. Jason needed to know that I was accepting of this 
and that I was not rejecting him. So when he called, my conscious thoughts were, you know, how can I be understanding, comforting, accepting? This is a blessing in my life. Once I knew it was true, I had no doubts that this was something that I wanted to embrace and that I wanted to share and that I wanted to um, uh, be part of his life and hopefully, you know, he would be part of my life. I joked with you when we did 23 and Me that you were going to find kids you didn't know about and you said no. <laughs> you said no way. Right. How could you think no way after all that you've done in your life? Because I didn't want you to be right again. Damn, I'm good. It's pretty interesting that it was like the same, you know, that you were 40 when you looked for Virgil and... The whole, none of it was lost on me. The universe mm -hmm. has power. Mm -hmm. And that power is what I live with. Mm -hmm. and, and that power gives me energy to behave positively or negatively. Mm -hmm. And this was a chance for me to behave positively. Classic Mark. More hippie stuff. This is Jason. Let's hear what he has to say about all this. I found out I was adopted when I was about eight years old. I was uh, at the pediatrician's office, at the doctor's office, and uh, just wandering around in the waiting room, waiting for the, or in the exam room, waiting for the doctor. And uh, my chart was up on the wall, and just being a uh, nosy kid, I uh, saw that there was a little piece of paper, paper clipped to the edge of the, uh, of the folder, and so I picked it up just to see what was underneath it, and it said adopted. <gasps> Did you wonder who your parents were? Not really, no. I kind of let it pass by for a few years. My biological mother had reached out to, to my adopted family just through a kind of a chance meeting. She ran into me, figured out that I was her son. Jason's family and his birth mom all lived in the same small town. So Missy got in touch, but your parents didn't give you the letter, right? Uh, well, actually, I intercepted the letter unknowingly in, in a way to probably just avoid what could have been an uncomfortable conversation for me. Mm -hmm. I, I did, not, did not share the letter with them. The letter was from Jason's birth mother to Jason's parents, expressing interest in meeting Jason. And how did you know? Open the letter addressed to his parents. I know. How did you know that it was? I, I, I don't I know. Like yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea why I opened that letter. Because of the universe, man. How did she find you? Uh, she was working at a uh, massage therapy clinic that uh, I was going to. I'd been in a car accident, so I was getting uh, massages every couple of weeks just to kind of help out with that. And uh, she saw my name and the birth date come across and recognized both. She reached out to me, though, individually a few years after that, echoing, I think, what was uh, uh, the, the sentiment in the letter and that she had, she had met me and uh, she, she believed to, that she was my biological mom and that if I was ever interested in uh, wow. her getting to know a little bit more, to let her know. How old were you? Tw probably early 20s, 23, 24, something, something like that. So why did you do 23 and Me? Uh, shits and giggles, uh, really. It didn't occur to you that your dad might be on there? Didn't, didn't even cross my mind. I'd actually <laughs> had been checking semi-frequently just to see if the results had come in. I started perusing through, checking out ethnicity, some of the health risk and things like that. And then you go into a section where you, off, you opt in to share your DNA and to find actual DNA relatives. So I go in and I see and the very first thing that's up on, on the left side uh, on the left column of the screen is uh, a ranking of your DNA relatives uh, based on on a percentage of a DNA match and I see one that's 50% uh, that says potentially biological father. I see the name Mark Dunn. I didn't necessarily remember Elliot's name who is who Missy had had, had thought my, mm -hmm. my biological father was so I texted her uh, just uh, letting her know that I'd gotten my 23andMe results and that the name Mark Dunn sounded familiar. She said no, that it didn't sound familiar. Uh, she said it, it's possible that around that time there could have been somebody else and uh, followed up with, with one of my favorite lines is that it was the 70s and uh, <laughs> cocaine and quaaludes were, were prevalent. I thought it was it was a good idea after talking to talking to my wife about it and talking to a close friend that, that I should at least reach out to this person and uh, let them know that I was I was around and so that's 
what happened. Uh, I sent the message via Facebook Messenger, like Mark, like Mark said, and it kind of snowballed from there. So that's the story about how I met my new brother. I didn't expect to find out that I had a brother that I didn't know about a year ago, and I doubly didn't expect to like him. I don't know what we're gonna end up being, but we talk and hang out. You know, it's interesting to have to catch someone up on your childhood. Me and him and Cheyenne send old pictures in a group chat just to be like, here's how awkward I looked at 13. What did you look like at 13? It's a very strange way to get to know someone. And it's been interesting like seeing what he's picked up from my family without having grown up with us. Like the way that he kind of laughs like my other brother or has the same smile and eyes as my sister. He's covered in tattoos. I'm covered in tattoos. Is it nature or is it nurture? We don't know. He has the same music taste as my dad. Are we grasping at straws? I think it's helped my dad heal a lot from meeting his birth father. I think it's helped his life come full circle and it's helped him realize that he can do for someone else what he needed his birth father to do for him. And that's like kind of a crazy gift that he's been given. Jason. Yes. How, how has your life been since we met? Very uplifting and positive. I, I think uh, the, the Dunn family has embraced me uh, as if I was one of their own, which has been really great. I certainly didn't expect uh, things to go as well as they have, and I really don't think things could have gone any better. And how did you feel when you met me and Cheyenne for the first time? What was that like? Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I, I was excited that you two were excited, so that made things uh put me at ease quite a bit i really hit it off uh i think with with you two immediately it was so much fun just to see all the similarities and not only physically but also uh personality wise mm -hmm. you and cheyenne are very similar people yeah yeah it's uh it's a little a little spooky sometimes some of the things that came out of her mouth uh it, I, amber and i both looked at each other amber my wife and we were like, oh, well, that's that's where that comes from, you know. There's, <laughs> there's certainly a, a big part of uh, nature uh, at play with those types of things. What is something that you would tell them if they're going through this or if they're in your position or in my position? Just go into things uh, with, with an open mind and an open heart, not to sound too hippie. Uh, <laughs> not to sound like our dad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, coming into this too... At my age, I'm 40 years old. I, I'm established in my life, in my career, in really my family. So everything that's come from this has just been extra. Something my therapist told me that really stuck with me is like, these are just people that, that just want to love you. And I mean, how could you not be excited about that? And that and that's that's how it, that's how it's felt to me from from day one. Are we friends? We're friends. I I, I think we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> we're like sibling friends. I hope I, I've lived up to uh, all of your expectations. I had none. <laughs> well, then, then that's easy. And it's been interesting too because I we've been sort of like having this year of like the family getting to know each other and us getting to know each other, but also like kind of weirdly keeping it a secret, like telling people like, oh, this is my brother, but not really specifying anything yeah. else. You know what I mean? And like you've kind of had a thing of, saying to people like, oh, I'm her brother, and then sort of being like, was that okay? Well, you know, I try to follow your lead, I think, on some of that, but it was it was bubbling over uh, mm -hmm. inside me. I've run out of cool stories to tell at parties, so this is a really <laughs> good one to uh, lead with now. Say bye to the people. Bye! More, right, Dad? Is that what you think? <laughs> yeah. What your mother's first response was after she got over the joy of we had another child in our family. Yeah. Next response was take your DNA down. <laughs>